Welcome everybody. In this video I'm going to talk about the histogram which appears in the develop module and the library module. While I originally made this video for Lightroom 5, 6, and Classic, the information I present is also applicable to the cloud-based Lightroom. In this application, to view the histogram while you're in the edit stack, click on the three dots and choose Show Histogram. It'll be up here at the top. Now I refer to this a lot when I'm developing a photo, so I want to make sure you have a good understanding of it. So the histogram represents a graph of the pixels in your photo based on how bright or how dark the pixels are. And if you're not sure what pixels are, I'm going to zoom in here all the way so that you can see the individual squares in the photo. Those are the individual pixels, so the graph counts the number of pixels based on how bright and how dark they are. Now the graph runs from pure black on the left hand side here, which in photography terms means completely underexposed, black with no detail, to pure white on the right hand side, which in photography terms means completely overexposed, pure white with no detail. This photo has no pixels that are blown out or pure white, and it has very few pixels that are pure black. I know it has some because I can click on this little triangle indicator here, and you may be able to see a few little blue indicators. But let me go ahead and force this picture to have more pixels that are blocked up and blown out. Now as I hover over this shadow indicator, it shows me what shadows are clipped which parts of the photo are pure black with no detail. As I hover over this triangle, it shows me which parts of the photo are pure white, blown out with no detail, which highlights are clipped. I'll go ahead and reset this photo to get it back to before I did this work. Now there's no correct shape to a histogram. This histogram has its shape simply because of the subject that I photographed. So this hump here is the bed. This big spike here is the black cat. So very dark tones, very bright tones. And then these mid-tones, tones of average brightness, are the chair, the inside of the ear, maybe the eyes, the crevices in the bed, etc. So there's no correct shape to the histogram. If we look at another photo, most of this photo is pretty bright, so that's this part here, but the rock is very dark, and that's this little rock here. It's interesting, it, it almost looks like the rock in the photo. This photo is a very bright photo, and there's not much difference in brightness between the brightest pixel and the darkest pixel. Now there's no correct shape to a histogram, but there is a correct placement of a histogram, or at least an optimal placement. Now you control the placement of the histogram along this scale when you set the exposure in your camera. Now I purposely exposed this photo very brightly to get an optimal placement of the histogram. The optimal placement is as far to the right as possible without blowing out any significant highlights or any highlights that you want to retain. This is called exposed to the right or ETTR. It's very different from film photography. It's in digital photography that we want to expose as brightly as possible without blowing out the highlights. That's because our sensor captures much higher quality information in the right part of the histogram than it does down here in the shadows. I can prove that to you if we go back to this cat here. I'm going to brighten up the cat so that you can see all of the detail in the cat. And then I'm going to zoom in. And then the last thing I'm going to do is turn off Lightroom's automatic noise reduction. So I'm coming down to the detail panel and I'm going to slide this back to zero. So this is what my camera captured. This is the deep shadows in the photograph. Before I increased exposure, it was the big spike way to the left on the histogram. It's very noisy and has much less detail. So that's the consequence of exposing something darkly. Now, in the case of this cat, there was no way to expose the cat any brighter without blowing out any highlights. As long as I don't need to brighten up the cat this much, I won't actually see it but it's best to always expose as far to the right as possible. As you're going to see in a video coming up soon, as it's captured, this photograph looks like nothing, but I'm going to be able to do a lot to this photograph to make it look really stunning because I've got high quality information. It's better to, to expose too brightly and darken rather than expose very darkly and brighten. 
Here's an example of a photo that was underexposed. So ideally, this photo would have been exposed further to the right, closer to the edge. Now you don't have to come within a millimeter of the edge, but within a half a stop to a stop would be just fine. Now if you're shooting on automatic because you're shooting a wedding, you don't necessarily have full control over this, but I'm pointing out the ideal scenario. Now notice that the histogram also shows us a graph of the color channels in our photo. Our photo is made up of red, green, and blue color channels. These other colors we're seeing are combinations of those colors. I do check to make sure that I'm not blowing out or blocking up any of the individual color channels because that would mean that I am losing some detail even if I haven't lost detail in all three of the channels. Now it's often the case that images will look best with a white histogram or in other words a range of tones that goes from almost pure white to almost pure black. Here's my image as captured and then here's my image after I've edited it. And in fact, we do have a wider range of tones. Here's another image. As captured, it looks pretty flat and we don't have a wide range of tones. And then after editing, we do. However, I don't edit my images specifically to achieve this. I edit my images to look good visually. And sometimes I achieve this and sometimes I don't. Here's an image that I really like. Again, it's pretty flat. But if I edit it to have a full range of tones, it looks absolutely terrible. So remember, editing your photos is an art. It's not a science. There is no right answer or correct answer to editing. Now before I conclude this video, I just want to show you a few more features of the histogram. Notice that below the histogram, we have the exposure information for our photograph. Now watch this area as I move my mouse into the photo. It's showing me the red, green, and blue percentages of the location in the photo that my mouse is at. So our photo is made up of red, green, and blue channels, and this is one measurement of the color in our photo. For example, I'm going to go ahead and hover over a red area in her cheek, and you'll see that of red, green, and blue, red is the highest value. If I go to her eye, which is gray, you'll see that the values are very much equal to one another. They're very neutral, which is gray. Now below the histogram, we also have an indicator that we're working with our original or master photo. Alternatively, if our masters were offline and we had built smart previews, it would give me that information here. And I have a separate video on smart previews. Now I want to go to this photo here to show you another indicator here in the histogram panel that you might get. This lightning bolt is a warning that this image is not using the most up-to-date version of developed technology. If you have images that you last edited in an older version, they're still set to use that older technology. If this is the case for you, watch my video on process version to learn how to update these and for discussion on when and whether you should. Okay, this concludes the video on the histogram. If you've enjoyed this video, please show your support by subscribing to my YouTube channel. Also, if you're using Lightroom 5, 6, or Classic, check out my Lightroom Fundamentals and Beyond video series. It's over 100 videos, over 24 hours of training, and I guarantee you'll love it. I'm Laura Shu.